Hi, and thank you uh, for coming to watch this comprehensive tutorial to uh, public use scripting. Throughout this, I'm going to teach a lot of the basics of Arma 3 scripting, and sp specifically scripting in public Zeus, because I've seen this coming up a lot recently with the implementation of scripted compositions, where a lot of uh, novice or beginner scripters are coming to the scene or people that don't even know how to script at all are trying to learn how to func how to do these functions and scripts and all these sorts of things. And I want to ensure that when people are making scripts that they're high quality, not going to uh, decrease the performance of these public servers. Because that was the original reason that the debug console was moved from these servers. So if we can keep these uh, scripts running at top performance, that'd be amazing. First things first, my name is Expunged. I'm the primary developer of XAM and its other features and uh, server enhancement packs. And you've probably seen me around if you've played Public Zeus. Why I have any right to explain to you guys what to do is because I've been doing this for almost two years now, and I've seen what to do wrong through my own doing, and I've seen what to do right as I've looked back on myself and realized uh, what things I was doing right and what things I was doing wrong with scripting. So I'm going to try and teach you guys what uh, mistakes I've made and how to fix those and not make those mistakes over and over again like I did for many months where I realized they were bad practice. So Arma 3 scripting as a whole is a very difficult topic to explain in one singular video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link below a guide by Fockers and it's the guide that I use to teach myself how to script, and I recommend it to every single person that wonders how to script. Uh, it's a very well done guide, and if you follow it through and you actually read the information, try to understand why, you should understand the basics of scripting. I'm going to continue this tutorial assuming that you have read the Fokker's Guide and you understand very basic aspects of scripting. So from here, we're assuming that you understand the basics of scripting. So now we can focus more on the specialization of the public Zeus official servers. So here we have some code that we can put into the init of an object. What BIS enable randomization does is it just makes it so that the object is created. It doesn't get a random object uh, texture or whatnot. And then we're setting the object texture. Place down a hunter. Set into the init. We're going to load into the scenario. What we should see is that the object has a red texture applied to it. So while it has a red texture applied to it, if this were to be ran in a server, we save this as a composition, placed it down in a PubZoo server, we wouldn't see this texture. Well, we would, but the other players wouldn't. That's because when you take a look at the command for set object texture, it has a local effect here. So if it has a local effect, that means it runs on your client own. So how do we get around that? Well, that's where remote execution comes into play. So let's learn about remote execute. Remote execute will take a function or anything of the sort, and it will run it on a specified client. This can be done on specific objects, specific players, server. And so it's a little daunting at first, and the first couple times when you're trying to figure it out, it's a little confusing. But once you understand it, it's not actually that difficult. Here, we're going to convert this to a remote execute. That way, every user that joins the server will be able to see this texture. So. The first thing here, the remote execute command, is the parameters. Parameters is anything that has to do with. So here, we have this at at the front of it. So if there's something in front of the front of the command, put it into a brackets, and you put that there, and then whatever's following after it in here copy and paste it 
like this. Really what's happening here, taking this, and we're basically just getting rid of it. And then we're putting a comma here. Brackets are missing. Then we have the remote execute command. Then the order. Well, the order is going to be the command that we're trying to run. Set object texture. Targets. This will be we're trying to run the thing on. Here, if we read the documentation, the default is zero. Zero means the order will be executed globally. It means it will be run, ran on the server and every connected client. So, this sounds like what we need. We're going to come here. And we're going to set targets to. Then, what's JIP? JIP is short for join in progress. What this means is that this, this code here will be ran on every client. But if we don't have JIP, then when someone joins after this code has been ran, this code won't run. So, what we have to do to make sure that this, uh, is applied every time someone joins that way otherwise someone joins and there's no texture on it they might be a little confused so what we're going to do is since jip can be set to true or false or it can be set to an object we're going to set it to the object so what this does is that when the object this whatever we have it placed in doesn't exist anymore it'll stop running this command when someone joins the server because it doesn't exist anymore. It'll remove it from the queue. So this is a good practice to use. A lot of the time, when you're remote executing something, you're going to want to use the object that you're applying it to anyway. Hardly any of the times will you ever set this to just true. Uh, especially because I've seen a lot of tutorials, uh, namely a few from, I think it's Tiber Brutus? Yeah, Tiber Brutus. Where in a lot of his scripts, sure, he's uh, helping people out. We go to how to display text. Here, he's using remote execute, but he's leaving JIP as true. So what this means is that when someone joins the server after that code has been ran, even though that message was sent so long ago, it'll be ran as soon as they join the server and load in. And that's not what we want for that type of script. So in a second, now that we've covered remote execute, we'll go over some of the restrictions on remote execute inside of actual PubZoo servers. Now we're going to cover some of the, re the restrictions on remote execution. Here we can see we have a uh, function here that creates a menu. Let's load in and it does. Run this. We get a test GUI. It just has some object, some displays here. Now, if we were to go into a server right now, let's take an invisible helipad, make a composition that does it. Say this is test comp one. Then, it's also save one where we remote execute this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a spawn remote execute. So we can just run code. Because as a, as a spawn uh, thing works here, see, it lets you run any sort of code here and it'll execute. So here all we're doing is that we have the parameters like before. We have the parameters out in front. We have this first one, which goes here. We have the second one, which is the code, which follows after. And remote spawn. So, this code will just be ran on every client, what this is doing. Now let's make this a second composition. SCOMP2. And join an actual PubZoo server. Find one of the scripts one. USA02. And now we've got the composition. So 
first one, which is test comp one, remember, wasn't remote executed. So it's only going to run on my client. So if I run this, it works just fine. Perfect. But if I run the second one here, comp two, what? Oh, I picked. So there's different uh, restrictions on remote execute than these servers. Namely, our f the biggest couple ones are on displays. So if we try to create menus like this on other clients, it's not going to work. At least as of now. Really, all you can script for user interfaces is for yourself. But since you're Zeus, uh, this means you can't really create any admin menus or anything of the sort. Uh, because once you disconnect, again, since you can't remote execute it, you can't make it jip. So once you disconnect, you lose the scripts. That's one of the many restrictions that we have on uh, on scripting in public Zeus. Now the important thing to remember about scripting is that just because we have these restrictions placed onto us in what we can do doesn't mean that we're really that limited in what we can do. Even with restrictions, create user interfaces that allow us to edit things and uh, do a lot of really cool stuff. Just, like, just because we have these restrictions on us doesn't mean anything. We still create really cool compositions that allow you to do a lot of things. But you have to be careful about what you're running. Some things that you run don't get you kicked. How it works. You can't you need to be careful about what you run if you get kicked for remote execute restrictions, public variable restrictions. Really, it's not the end of the world. You get kicked from the server and you can't join back for like two or three minutes, and that's it. You don't get banned, you don't get anything like that. Don't get scared if you get kicked from a server for remote execute restrictions. Because frankly, if they banned you for these restrictions, a lot of people would be getting banned for the wrong reasons. Uh, to give an example of what I mean, go here and find the hint button module. Custom hint. Oh, shit here. Oh, kicked. So the, the, ver the restrictions are very, 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 very sensitive. So don't be afraid if you get kicked. It's completely normal. I get kicked hundreds of times a day, pretty much, just trying to make things work. Don't get scared when you get kicked. It's normal. Overall, let's try to remember what the goal of scripting here is. It's not to create some sort of aids, really over the top uh, vehicle composition. This one, what's the point? It doesn't add anything new to the game. It doesn't create anything interesting or new. It doesn't add stuff. It's just aesthetics that don't even look that nice. So what we should be aiming to do is make new things that are actually cool, like creating uh, IEDs, creating hostages, or an HVT, an HVT. Create an HVT. Now, when someone kills him, gives a notification, kill them. If I were to run towards this IED person, explode. This is the type of stuff that we should be trying to make with scripts. Not really excessive things. Stop seeing. This. If I see another one of these fucking hemets with vehicle guns on the fucking back, I'm gonna oh, my my brain's gonna fucking explode. I'm so tired of seeing these. And let's stop running this uh, this earthquake script that Tiber posted because he has JIP enabled on it. And every time you join the server, you have fucking earthquake happening. Let's just try to make better code, better scripts that are actually improving the quality of life in public Zeus. That's the main goal of scripting, guys. We shouldn't be trying to make stuff that we think looks cool. We should be making stuff that actually improves the experience for the public Zeus players. That is our goal as scripters. So I hope that this tutorial got you started on the basics of public Zeus scripting. Uh, obviously, it's not going to cover everything, but it should give you a good starting place for actually getting your adventure into public Zeus scripting. 
in the future, I plan on making a lot more more in-depth on certain topics tutorials. So in the, in the comments below, just leave some uh, specific topics that you'd like me to cover and explain. Maybe I'll make a video that explains Remote Execute in more depth soon. Thank you for uh, watching. I hope this helped out. Have a great day.